Hello and welcome to Generation Media Reaction. Hi. Today we're going to be reacting to a film from 1986 called Stand By Me. Now, Stand By Me, I've had Stand By Me in my DVD collection for about, I dread to think, maybe 25 years and it's still sealed. I saw it when I was younger. I bought this when I was collecting DVDs. It cost £9.99 from Virgin at the time and I thought it'd be a really good film for us to watch because the characters in the film are not far from your age and it's a little dramatic but I think it's okay drama rather than violence i would say i don't know anything about this movie it's based on a stephen king uh, short story called the body which is part of this different seasons collections which also has apt pupil and rita hayworth and the shawshank redemption the film was directed by rob reiner and he'd just come off the back of spinal tap and the sure thing and this is before he moved on to when harry met sally princess bride misery he was proving himself at the time as a serious filmmaker but also with a bit of comedy behind him it was nominated uh, during the Academy Awards that year for Best Adapted Screenplay and it got two nominations for Best Director and Best Motion Picture at the Golden Globes. It's, it's regarded of one of the greatest films definitely of the 80s and greatest of all time. It, whilst it's made in 1986 it's set in 50s or the 60s because it's looking back at somebody's childhood in that time. So the main voice, the narrator, Richard Dreyfus, is looking back at his childhood when he's a grown adult in 1986. So there's a little bit of nostalgia uh, and that's why the music is a bit of that time and all the fashion is and some of the cultural references are, are of that time as well. I'm looking forward to seeing River Phoenix in it because River Phoenix was just an amazing actor. His, unfortunately his career was cut short. I think without any further ado let's just go for it. Are you ready? Yes. Right. Would you like to open the DVD? Okay. I love this. This is how we used to get movies in the day. Let's do it. Are you ready? Yes. Let's pop it in. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, like and subscribe. Uh, and make any comments of any films you would like to see us react to. And stick around for our, our review at the end of watching it. Columbia Pictures. I really do think there should be some sound. Maybe not. Oh, there we go. You hear the sound? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Richard Dreyfus. Attorney Christopher Chambers fatally stabbed in a restaurant. I was 12 going on 13 the first time I saw a dead human being. It happened in the summer of 1959, a long time ago. That's him. Yeah. 1959. I was living in a small town in Oregon called Castle Rock. There were only 1,281 people, but to me, it was the whole world. Wow, what a tree house. Pretty big tree house. Yeah. Hey, how do you know a Frenchman's been in your backyard? I am French, okay? <laughs> your garbage cans are empty and your dog's pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man, deal. Chris Chambers was the leader of our gang and my best friend. He came from a bad family and everyone just knew he'd turn out bad. Chris Chambers. Oh. Oh man, wait to hear this, wait to hear this. I ran all the way home. <laughs> yeah, what is it? You guys wanna go see a dead body? At the beginning of the school year, he had buried a quart jar of pennies underneath his house. He drew a treasure map so he could find them again. Vern had been trying to find those pennies for nine months. 
We saw him. So? It ain't nothing to us. The kid's dead, so it ain't nothing to him neither. Brocker, or Brower, or Flowers, whatever his name is. The train must have hit him. We had all followed the Ray Brower story very closely because he was a kid our age. Three days before, he had gone out to pick blueberries, and nobody'd seen him since. I just wish we never boosted that goddamn Dodge. We're not gonna tell nobody. I know the back Harlow Road. It comes to a dead end by the Royal River. The train tracks are right there. I bet you anything that if we find them, we'll get our pictures in the paper. Yeah, yeah, we can even be on TV. Sure. We'll be heroes. Yeah. I don't know. Well, my dad'll hide me anyway, but hell, it's worth the hiding. Shit, yeah. Let's do it. Do you know what hiding is? What? The American term for being being punished. Vern. Come on, Verno. <laughs> Vern. <laughs> I wanted to share my friend's enthusiasm, but I couldn't. No, oh, why not? That summer at home, I had become the invisible boy. In April, my older brother Dennis had been killed in a jeep accident. Oh. Four months had passed, but my parents still hadn't been able to put the pieces back together again. Oh. So they're ignoring him. Yeah, they're still they they're grieving for his older brother. Hmm. So he doesn't have somebody older looking after him at the moment, or the feeling of not having somebody to look up to. Hmm. Hey, Gordy, I got something for you. It's a really good uh, way of... This, my friend, is for you. For us to have empathy with him. This is your Yankee cat. No, no. It's John Cusack. You found it. Yeah. Why can't you have friends like Denny's? Dad, they're okay. Sure they are. A thief and two Phoebes. Chris isn't a thief. He stole the milk money at school. He's a thief in my book. Chris stole the milk money at school. That's not that bad. Well, but his, parents, his dad's not really very fair on him, is he? Hmm. He's like, why can't you have good friends? It was almost noon as we set out to find the body of a dead kid named Ray Brower. Wow, it's a great premise. It's really nicely set up. We care about this guy. He's going to find a dead body. Such a short space of time. This has hooked us in. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Come on, what is it? A gun. I want to be the Lone Ranger of the Cisco Kid. <laughs> wow. My dad will think that he used him himself shooting at beer cans while he was drunk. So his dad's not very good either. Hmm. Jesus! <laughs> oh. Pinky swear. <laughs> That's what I do to you, Pinky Swear. No, they're really good friends. Um. Hey, girls, where are you going? Hey, come on, man. My brother gave me that. Come on, man. That's mine. <laughs> you real asshole. You know that? Your brother's not very polite, eyeball. Now, Christopher, I know you didn't mean to insult my friend. They're, br they're brothers. The oh. boys in the white t-shirt. Oh. oh shit! Take it back. Oh. Are they brothers? The oh. other older boy and the and this guy Chris, him and the boy on the boy on the floor, oh. are brothers. I take a map. Wow, he's really. It's really a bully. See you later, girls. He took Gordy's hat, which was his older brother's hat. Yeah. And he's with a guy who's the older brother of Chris. There's no good older male for these boys. What are they doing? Why are they kicking each other? Just having fun. They're good friends. They're really solid with each other. I want to see a bear. Or a garbage can. <laughs> I put 
a comb. What do we need a comb for? Well, if we get on TV, we want to look good, don't we? A lot of thinking, Vern. Thanks. <laughs> Two for flinching. <laughs> Oof. How far do you think it's going to be? Imagine the train just comes from behind them. Yeah. Who's your fave? Uh, Chris. Yeah. Paladin. Would you go on a journey like this? To go and see know. a dead body? I don't know. Maybe not. Hey, I'm kind of hungry. Who's got the food? Oh, shit. Did anybody bring anything? <laughs> Oh, you brought the comb. What do you need a comb for? You don't even have any hair. I brought it for you guys. You don't even have any hair. Yeah. <clears throat> the first problem they encounter is not having any food. <laughs> Let's see how much money we got. Seven cents for. I haven't found my pennies yet. Quita Cholos is at the end of that little road that goes by the junkyard. I think we can get some stuff there. Train coming. Oh, there's a the train. Yeah. Did they have they seen it? They saw it, yeah. I'm gonna dodge it. I'm gonna dodge. Train dodge. <laughs> train dodge. Oh my goodness. Train dodge. Oh, Teddy. did try and kill himself. Well, he, he he didn't really, but he was being reckless. He wanted, he thought he could dodge out the way right at the last second. There's like a little game to play, or chicken sort of game play. But Skin it. he's really reckless. Could have dodged it. Listen, Teddy, you can dodge it on the way back, man. You can dodge it on the way back. Hmm. That's cool, they make up quickly, it's good. Hey. Mm, it's the older boys. Billy and Billy were playing mailbox baseball with Ace and Eyeball. Oof. Okay. No trespassing. Keep out. Stand back, men! Pretty sure it is trespassing. Exactly. Milo had trained Chopper not just to sick, but to six specific parts of the human anatomy. Thus, a kid who had illegally scaled the junkyard fence might hear the dread cry, Chopper, sick balls. <laughs> um, I'm kind of tired. Go! Oh, you're a dead man, LeChant! But I this stuff. Yeah. It seems to me now there was more, and that we all knew it. Everything was there and around us. We knew exactly who we were and exactly where we were going. It was grand. Gordy, go get the provisions, you morphodite. Don't call me any of your mother's pet names. <laughs> wow, that's so cool. They've all got their personalities. All four of them. Shut up. Shut up. I, I grow, grow up. up. And, and when, when I look, look at you, you, I throw up. You're Danny Lachance's brother. Yes, sir. Shame what happened to him. I remember the year it was all conference. The quarterback he played. Boy, could he throw. Father, God, and sonny Jesus. He's living in the shadow of his brother, but his brother's not around. It's sad. People perceive him as being the younger brother. Dennis, when you're out there tomorrow. Bob, did you read the story that Gordy wrote? Gordy wrote a story. It was really good. Sorry, I don't know how many I really liked it. Thought it was great. <laughs> but his brother didn't ignore him. But now his brother's not there anymore. Yeah, well, your brother, Denny Short, could play football. It's really a powerful mechanism. 
I really care for him. Oh crap. Oh, my dog. Now he said sickum boy. <laughs> but what I heard was chopper sick balls. <laughs> <laughs> Chopper was my first lesson in the vast difference between myth and reality. <laughs> Stop teasing that dog, you hear me? Stop teasing him! Fat ass! You little tin weasel, peckerwood loony son. You teddy do champ. Your dad's a loony. A loony up in the nut house in Togas. He took your ear and he put it to a stove and he burnt it off. My father stormed the beach in Normandy. He's crazier than a shit house rat. He's just verbally really. Ah! Get the gun! Get the gun! Get the gun! Well, it's a horrible adult. Bastard. I know your name. You're the chance. I know all you guys. And all your fathers are going to get a call from me. Except for the loony up in Tokus. Oh, come on, man! Poor. Jeez. A night without armor and a savage. <laughs> it's so, Vern is so lovable. <laughs> Sorry if I'm spoiling everybody's good time. Oh man. I'm not sure it should be a good time. You saying you want to go back? No. But going to see a dead kid, maybe it shouldn't be a party. Like if he's really bad, like all cut up in blood and shit all over him, <laughs> I might have nightmares. <laughs> wow. Shut up, come on, God damn it. <laughs> oh, it's so well written. So it's still well written. That's, oh. what That's what the bad boys do. <laughs> A KLAM news break. We interrupt to bring you an update on the search for the missing 12 year old uh. Ray Brower. The police have expanded their efforts to include Mutton, Durham, and the outlying areas. Yeah, a the boy is indicated... Kid's gone. They're never going to find him. Not where they're looking. If either one of you assholes had $2,000, I'd kill you both. Well, wow, he's really mean, isn't he? Do you think I'm weird? Definitely. No, man, <laughs> seriously. Am I weird? Yeah, but so what? Everybody's weird. If you're taking your college courses and me, Teddy, and Vern, while well, we'll be in the shop courses with the rest of the retards making ashtrays of birdhouses. You're going to meet a lot of new guys. Smart guys. Meet a lot of pussies is what you mean. No, man. I'm not going in with a lot of pussies. Forget it. Well, then you're an asshole. What's asshole about wanting to be with your friends? It's asshole if your friends drag you down. You hang with us, you'll just be another wise guy with shit for brains. You could be a real writer someday, Gordy. Mm -hmm. Fuck writing. I don't want to be a writer. It's stupid. It's a stupid waste of time. That's your dad talking. I know how your dad feels about you. He doesn't give a shit about you. Danny was the one he cared about. Don't try to tell me different. Oh. You know, he's, uh, I remember his older brother said that he'd written a really good story. You're just a kid, Gordy. Oh, gee, thanks, Dad. <laughs> Wish the hell I was your dad. You wouldn't be going around talking about taking these stupid shop courses if I was. It's like God gave you something, man. All those stories that you mm. can make up. But kids lose everything unless there's someone there to look out for them. And if your parents are too fucked up to do it, then maybe I should. Wow, he's a really good friend. Yeah, by the time we get there, the kid won't even be dead anymore. It's nostalgia. Hey, hey, hey. <sighs> the train comes now, then they're dead. Mm. Any of you guys?
I just know what the next train is to. You walk five miles down the river, you gotta walk five miles back. That could take till dark. Oh, they're all really good performances, aren't they? They're really good actors. Look, you guys can go around if you want to. I'm crossing here. I'll be waiting for you on the other side, relaxing with my thoughts. You use your left hand or your right hand for that? <laughs> All right. Okay. It's a risk. It looks kind of, it looks stable. If it can hold a train, it can probably hold a person. Yeah. Or four. <clears throat> Quite large gaps there between the... Uh, well, just do what he's doing. Yeah. Oh, look, it's quite big gaps, actually. Oof. I wouldn't be able to fall through one fully. So I'd be fine. Probably mm. trip, but I wouldn't fall fully. What's that? It's a comb that was in his pocket. Train! Oh god. Move it, man, go on, move it. They're almost they're almost there. They're lucky. They're almost there. Oh. Oh my god. He's being kind of an idiot. Oof. Well, I, I, the two first people definitely made yeah, it. Yeah, they've, they've made it, look. Should have jumped f sideways. They they sort of did. Onto the pavement, not jumping right off. Yeah, but they did. They they jumped as, to the side as quickly as was possible. Hey, Oof. at least now we know when the next train was due. Wow. Man, that was the old time train dodge. Vern, you were so scared. You looked like that fat guy having a stole when he saw the mummy. Um, no, really, I wasn't. Sincerely. Okay, then you won't mind if we check the seat of your jockeys for Hershey scores, will you? Why don't you tell us the story? Uh, I don't know. Well, this kid, he's our age, but he's fat. Real fat. Oh, yeah, my cousin's like that. Sincerely. She weighs over Sincerely. 300 pounds. The greatest revenge idea. A kid ever had. Oh. In the great Tri-County Pie Eat principle. Oh, okay. Expect a new cover to the fight, but one we expect great things it's a pillow. in the future. <coughs> Young Master David Hogan. It's a, I think that's a pillow or something. It's padding, yeah. Yes, how is your trip? <laughs> Oh. Don't pay any attention to those fools, lardass. <laughs> Just Davey. Oh, they're not very nice to him. Go! <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> Done! Oh, it's horrible. Uh. <laughs> uh. Yeah, it's horrible. If the audience didn't know was that Lardass wasn't really interested in winning. What he wanted was revenge. Castor oil. It's really uh, disgusting stuff. It doesn't sit very well on the stomach. What's he doing? <clears throat> What's he doing? Is he, he... What's he doing? It's disgusting. What do you think he's doing? I don't know. Done! He's preparing for revenge. Is he going to explode? What do you think? Yeah. Suddenly, Bardess opened his mouth. And before Bill Travis knew it, he was covered with five pies worth of used blueberries. 
one look at Bill Travis embarked on Principal Wiggins. <laughs> Sitting next to him. <laughs> but when the smell hit the crowd, that's when Lord Ass's plan really started to work. Just sat back and enjoyed what he created. <laughs> A complete and total barforama. <laughs> what do you think? It's weird. Huh? It was weird. <laughs> oh man, that was the best. Just the best. Yeah. That would happen. Why don't you make it to that? So that Lardis goes home and he shoots his father. And then he runs away and, and he joins the Texas Rangers. How about that? Wolves. Oh my god. <laughs> Jeez, this is not what you want to hear if you're in the woods on your own. They've got a gun. Yeah, but still, you don't want to be in a situation where you use the gun, have to use the gun. Give me the gun. I'll take the first watch. Good idea there. Good solution. Hmm. 2300 hours. Corporal Teddy Duchamp stands guard. No sign of the enemy. The fort is secure. Shut up, Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> having a bad dream. Mm. No, this is the dream. Of uh, the funeral yeah. of his brother. Yeah. It's obviously playing on his mind. Should have been you, Gordon. Ah! <sighs> That's harsh, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Who are you dreaming? Wow. Not only is he miss his brother, but his parents, they favoured his brother. That's horrible. I miss him, Chris. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I of course really you miss do. Him. I know. He didn't miss his brother. No, he does miss him. Oh. Why didn't he cry? Mm -hmm. He feels guilty that he didn't cry at his brother's funeral. At his brother's funeral. Like, but his, um, sometimes emotion can be that you're you know, you know, you can't express emotion because it has such an impact on you. So he feels guilty about that. Maybe you could go into the college courses with me. That'll be the day. Why not? You're smart enough. No one even asked me if I took the milk money that time. I just got a three-day vacation. When he stole the milk money, he was suspended from school for three days. Did you take it? Yeah, I took it. You knew I took it. Hmm. Maybe I was sorry and I tried to give it back. I tried to give it back? And maybe the next week, old lady Simons had this brand new sugar on when she came to school. Yeah, yeah, it was brown and had dots on it. Yeah. So let's just say that I stole the milk money, but old lady Simons stole it back from me. Hmm. They tried to give the milk money back. Oh. But the teacher took it. Anyway, she saw her chance and she took it. I was the stupid one for even trying to give anyway, it back. Everybody blamed him. The teacher's horrible. It's greedy. Because his family's got a bad reputation in the town. The teacher. someplace where nobody knows me yeah <laughs> go to the go to the school that Cordy's talking about <laughs> he's got a really feeling of um, justice mm. I feel bad for him yeah yeah so dangerous we're sitting on the rail yeah are there uh, guns there 
think he'll hear it. He might get coming. out, but he might forget his gun. Oh. It's a deer. It's a baby deer. It was on the tip of my tongue to tell them about the deer, but I didn't. That was the one thing I kept to myself. I've never spoken or written of it until just now. I never understood that scene when I watched it when I was a child. I do now. <laughs> Why does he not want them to know about the deer? Why does he not want them to know about the deer? Why? I guess um, it's just a moment he enjoyed to himself, a moment of innocence. Hmm. The reality of Ray Brower was growing and kept us moving despite the heat. For me, the idea of seeing that kid's dead body was starting to become an obsession. It reminds us of the story. Jeez, it really is well written. <clears throat> Take no prisoners! Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, Ace, um, maybe me and Charlie shouldn't go. Yeah, maybe we can go without us, huh? You stated your position clearly. Now I'm gonna stay mine. Get in the fucking car. They're gonna try and find it. And they actually know where it is. Yeah. She's gonna get there first. <laughs> you flinch! Don't be flinching! How are we supposed to get across this? We use you as a raft. Very funny. It doesn't look that deep. It's not that deep. You can walk yeah, across. Fine. It's gonna suddenly, yeah. suddenly it's really deep. That was so well done. Is it me, or are you the world's biggest pussy? We shouldn't laugh. <laughs> Maybe he's dead. <laughs> Maybe he's dead. Forty. <laughs> oh, blessing. Maybe he made a bad mistake and looked at your face. Shut up, Teddy. <laughs> it's really witty. It's really funny. 
Wow. God, Teddy's really funny as the character. He's really great to... Uh... Ah, get off me! Ow. Hey, do a flinching! Do you like it? Do you like it? Do it? Do you like 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 even if no one had followed me, I would have gone on alone. They're each learning. They're each growing. It's great. The older boys. No way, Ace. Not this time, man. No way. He's, uh, he's psycho. He's reckless. He's, they're really, uh, Ace is really, they're putting him up to be a, not a nice guy. Oh, and they're going to. Coming through the woods, I bet we saved over an hour. For our kid must be around here someplace. Do you think they'll find him? Oh, obviously they'll find him. None of us could breathe. Somewhere under those bushes was the rest of Ray Brower. The train had knocked Ray Brower out of his keds, just like it had knocked the life out of his body. The kid wasn't sick. The kid wasn't sleeping. The kid was dead. You okay? Mm-hmm. I'm fine. Let's look for some long branches. We'll build them a stretcher. Oh, that's really powerful. Gordy? Why did you have to die? What's the matter with Gordy? Nothing. Why don't you guys just go over there and look for some branches, okay? Okay. Yeah. That's the reason for his older brother's story. To die, Chris. Why did Denny have to die? Why? I don't know. He just doesn't know you. He hates me. My dad hates me. <laughs> I don't hate you. Come on. It's okay. <laughs> You're going to be a great writer someday, Gordy. You might even write about us guys if you ever get hard up for material. Jesus, this film is um, hitting me more than I thought it would. It's, um... I guess I'd have to be really hard up. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Of course, he is writing about them. The fuck do you know about this? Some bitch! My little oh. brother! He wasn't planning on taking the body from us, was you, boys? We found him. We got dibs. Oh, we better start running, eyeball. They got dibs. <laughs> we earned you, man. You guys came in a car. That's not fair. He's ours. That's not fair. He's ours. Jeez. It's like... Fern, you little son of a whore. At the end of their journey, this is what they face. An older version of themselves. 
Mm. You guys have two choices. You either leave quietly, and we take the body. Or you stay, we beat the shit out of you. And we take the body. Besides, me and Billy found him first. Yeah, Vern told us how you found him. Oh, Billy, I wish we never boosted that car. <laughs> <laughs> this is your last chance. What do you say, kid? Why don't you go home and fuck your mother some more? <laughs> <laughs> You're dead. Come on, man. Jesus. You're gonna have to kill me, Ace. No problem. Oh, yes, they have a gun. Yes. Get out. Leave. Don't You're not taking come. it. Nobody's taking it. You ain't got the sack to shoot a woodchuck. He's gonna shoot him. Move this. Yes, they, they really... I'll kill you, I swear to God. They really do deserve it, because they... Mm. Just give me the gun. You must have at least some of your brother's good sense. Oof. Don't give the gun. He'll just use it to kill you. Suck my fat one, you cheap dime store hood. <laughs> Fire. What are you going to do, shoot us all? Always. Just you. <laughs> We're going to get you for this. Maybe you will, and maybe you won't. Wow. They really do deserve it. You should, just, it. you should just shoot him in the back. Wouldn't that would be bad, wouldn't it? Yeah, but I think <laughs> he's the one who killed Chris. Whoever told you had a fat one chance. Do you think? Yeah. He says Chris was stabbed in a restaurant. Oh, jeez. I wonder. Most likely. Is that what we're... He should have just shot him. Now he lost. Well remembered. I think that's what happened. Are we gonna take him? No. But, but we came all this way. We were supposed to be heroes. Not this way, Teddy. Ray Brower's body was found but neither our gang nor their gang got the credit. In the end, we decided that an anonymous phone call was the best thing to do. And although many thoughts raced through our minds, we barely spoke. We'd only been gone two days, but somehow the town seemed different, smaller, In school. Yeah. Yeah. See you in junior high. Huh? Penny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he lost all his mm. pennies, remember? Now he's found a penny. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> he's mm. So that's the end of his story. He finds his penny. It's amazing. Hey, Chris. No hard feelings, okay? No way, man. Yeah, the song as time went on, we saw less and less of Teddy and Vern. Until eventually, they became just two more faces in the halls. It happens sometimes. Friends come in and out of your life like busboys in a restaurant. I'll see you. Not if I see you first. <laughs> Chris did get out. He enrolled in the college courses with me, and although it was hard, he gutted it out like he always did. He went on to college and eventually became a lawyer. Last week, he entered a fast food it restaurant. Was about justice. Just ahead of him, two men got into an argument. One of them pulled a knife. Chris, who had always made the best piece, tried to break it up. He was stabbed in the throat. He died almost instantly.
Although I haven't seen him in more than 10 years. I know I'll miss him forever. Yeah. Yeah. Dad, can we go now? You ready? Yeah, we've been ready for an hour. Okay, I'll be right there. You said that a half hour ago. Yeah, my dad's weird. He gets like that when he's writing. Down the lens. <clears throat> That's an ending. <laughs> this song is called Stand By Me. Mm -hmm. Remember? Harry, music guy, was teaching you this on the guitar. Is it on the guitar? Yeah. Yeah. River Phoenix. Yeah, he... Oh. That ending when he fades, he disappears. River Phoenix only lived for another something like seven or eight years. It's very sad. He's a fantastic actor. His brother is Wackwin Phoenix, and um, he's a fantastic actor. It's a real tragedy. It adds so many layers to watching the film now. All the supporting cast were amazing. All the adults were amazing. Mm. All serving purpose of the cruelty of adulthood for, for a 12-year-old. Don't grow and be a twisted adult. Don't grow and be a twisted adult. <laughs> what did you think? That was good. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You said, what an ending. What does, it, what does it mean to you? It was strange, the ending. I feel like they should have done a reunion. With the four friends? Mm -hmm. But that was the time of their lives. That was the time that they were friends in that particular time. And as he says, the Teddy and Vern, they gradually sort of drifted a bit further away. And eventually he drifted away from Chris. Um, he hadn't seen Chris in 10 years, but he was such a part of him growing up. There was their, their friendship was so strong when they were 12. He will always be part of him. Mm. It's true. I liked all the characters. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. I yeah. liked the movie. I really like the scene when they were running away from the guy and the dog. Okay. And when Chopper. He, and when he said, all I heard, Chopper, you're sick horse. Yeah. That man was horrible. He was horrible. He was a great performance, but he was horrible. He was really picking on Teddy, wasn't he? Looney, looney, looney. I didn't realise how much the film would hit me, actually, because when I saw it when I was younger, I just enjoyed it seeing kids my age on screen and it's fun you know it's just just a fun <laughs> film it's really cool it's like a, an adventure but it is an adult looking back at his childhood with nostalgia at this story and now I'm the adult looking back at my own childhood of watching the film with you <laughs> my son <laughs> it's, really layered really layered experience a little bit overwhelming it's so spot on it's so well written you care about every single one of the characters the performances are great the directing was great yeah and it was what's the word the drama in it was quite visceral 
chopper, the anger, the raw emotions of the older brother dying, the train, the campfire, the leeches, the threat from Ace. With a knife, he pulls out the knife. I think he probably would have killed him at that point. What? When he pulls out the knife, you know, he could well have killed Chris Chambers at that point. And I think which, of course, echoes how he dies later in you know as as an older character because he's he gets stabbed oh man it's it's a really really smart really smart film there's no redeeming adult in the story no adult is nice in the story that i can think of immediately the shining light was his brother the dad oh no you already said him the dad was dismissive of gordy yep the older boys obviously like they had no one who was mentoring them they only had each other Mm -hmm. which is why it's a story about growing with friends the main one what was his name again the author Gordy yeah he his friend Chris uh, was the leader he was kind of taking responsibility Teddy was the funny one now, the other guy who wasn't the author Vern Vern the scared one the person to have a second thought about things and Gordy I don't know what to say about Gordy why have the writers chosen for him to have lost a big brother in the story why would you write that why would you write that for a character to have experience I don't know. because first of all you have instant you like him you feel sorry for him right you have empathy but i think it means more it means that he hasn't got a, an older person to look up to to guide him so they have each other he fears becoming something other than his brother or you know the old the other boys there they're not so as nice as his brother i would recommend this to a friend because because it's about friends. I really liked the scene where Chris reveals to Gordy that he did steal the milk money, but the milk money was stolen off him when he tried to give it back. Chris could have a bad life ahead of him because of his family's reputation. And his story is all about breaking out. Can he break away from that? Vern's story is about finding his pennies and he's lovable. And Teddy, he's a little scarred, actually. Father's not very nice to him, but he also sort of fantasizes about being in the military. And it, it, it's a tragedy for tra Teddy because he's, as a character on screen, we like him. He comes up with lots of jokes. But you are also aware that his destiny, his future, is going to be tainted. You combine all these things together, it's very, very complex with the characters. It's really well written. The film Stand By Me is mysterious, um, sad, happy, and... Amazing. Great. Thank you for being with us while we've watched Stand By Me and for our reactions to it. Um, I was unprepared for a lot of what the film had. I hadn't seen it maybe in 30 years. Seeing it through the adult eyes now is, was made me well up quite a lot, actually. It's really a great film. I love it. I had a really good time watching it. I'm a bit, I'm a bit, I'm a bit, uh, I'm a little bit in shell shock at the moment. Thanks guys, um, please like and subscribe, please put suggestions down and uh, we'll see you on the next one.